have a sort of interesting job. I'm an adjunct associate faculty member at Utah State, which basically is a fancy way of saying I have an office up there, but I've got to come up with all my own funding and make it happen on my own. I don't have a regular teaching position. I do mostly research, and I run an organization called the Western, Western Aspen Alliance. So uh, a basic mission of that is to get Aspen science out to land managers and private landowners and uh, NGOs and any, any kind of individuals who are interested in, in knowing how Aspen ecosystems work. Pando clone is a giant Aspen clone. It's thought to be the largest living thing on Earth. It's 108, 106 acres in size and it's an estimated 47,000 stems all of one genetically identical creature. And it's right uh, astride or uh, next to Fish Lake in central Utah on the Fish Lake National Forest. So uh, it's re recently come into the news a lot because large portions of the clone are dying. And it's a, it's a complex ecological story, but it basically points a finger back at, uh, back at us as humans and maybe mismanaging that situation. And, uh, Hopefully we can set things straight uh, with a little bit of intensive work in that area. Well, what's special about this particular clone, I'll start with that and then the broader Aspen picture in the Western U.S. and Western Canada, but uh, is that it, it is so large and so it's sort of iconic. It's actually on a U.S. postage stamp. It's one of the Wonders of America, I think, series. Um, contrary to estimates you might see elsewhere, there's not a way to age the clone, although we can age individual tree stems with traditional methods. Uh, we don't know how old it is. It's probably thousands of years old, perhaps tens of, tens of thousands or even more. So it's very old, it's very large, it's been around a long time, and then it's sort of collapsing right now on our watch. And so uh, what's special about it, number one, is that, uh, is that this, uh, this very versatile creature that's found a way to survive for millennia is kind of coming undone, probably because of things we've done, and I'll cut to the chase. Uh, some of those things are just over browsing by both wildlife and domestic livestock. And in this case, deer and elk in that area are, find aspen, uh, tiny aspen very tasty. And if you, uh, if you run that formula out for years or decades, pretty soon you get a one generation aspen stand. And that's, that's dangerous whether we're talking about human populations or, or aspen trees. So imagine we had a small village that was made up entirely of 80-year-old people. Uh, soon they would begin dying off if they hadn't died off already and that's kind of the situation with the pando clone. Except so those stems are oh 110 to 120 years of age and there's almost no babies, no teenagers, no middle age and not even any uh, older adults. It's just senior citizens and so that's a very non-sustainable formula. So why is Aspen important? It retains uh, a lot of water. Water is number one in the West in terms of issues. Uh, that's, that's one reason. Uh, another reason is one of the most highly biodiverse systems in the West. And so all of these other creatures, both plants and animals, are dependent on those systems. So it's a, it's a classic kind of cascading picture. If that falls apart, all the animals and plants that are dependent on that system fall apart. On top of that, now, of course, we're adding uh, what we expect to be prolonged droughts and, and a climate change situation. So the combination of drought and, uh, and large herbivores browsing these uh, stands, you have some places, particularly low elevation, drier sites on south and southwest facing slopes, are across the Colorado Plateau for sure, but even across the greater west, that are running into some serious problems. I have to emphasize that Aspen are not in trouble everywhere. The sky isn't falling so much as this is, a, this is more of a harbinger of things that, that could happen and that we should keep our eyes on if we, want to be, if we want to be effective stewards of these very important ecosystems.